Finally, the wait is over and my Dataverse course is out. This course is mainly designed for professional developers, mainly for Power Apps and Power Automate developers, and it took me a long time, mainly because lots of things changed that I wanted to present it in this course in a certain way. In the meanwhile, ChatGPT became so popular, so everybody got into it. I don't worry, this is not a course about ChatGPT and how to use it inside Dataverse. But let me tell you right in the beginning that I have used ChatGPT to generate this course a lot, in a specific way, not in a way that everybody else does. I didn't ask ChatGPT to create the course content for me. I did the exact opposite. Every topic that I wanted to present, I took it to ChatGPT, and everything that ChatGPT as answer gave me a pile of garbage, I said, okay, this is something that the community needs. So I put the legit content together and included it in the course. So lots of the questions that you cannot easily find the answers are included in this Dataverse course. So in this video, I want to show you a few things. First of all, here is the free course coupon. I just put the QR code right there. Get it, scan it. If you're lucky to have this voucher before anybody else, good luck. Get it and enjoy it for free. On the other side, I want to tell you what is covered in this course. And I also want to give you a sample chapter so that you know what kind of training is included in this course and how you should get into it. So let's go to the course content and see what we have inside it. Let me start by telling you that the world is changing. The AI is going to take part of our jobs, but not all of that. We cannot hide away from AI. AI is coming to our door and we have to be able to use it. And to capitalize on the capabilities of AI in building any solution, the most important thing is a good understanding of the core concept of that technology. And this is exactly what this course is targeting. So in this course, understanding is a lot more important than actually doing it. The other thing is that this course is designed for beginners, but not all the beginners. If you have already taken my other courses, I typically target an absolute newbie. So I have lots of students that they are actually citizen developers. They are not professional developers. This course is slightly different. Nobody gives Dataverse to a citizen developer. This is designed for professional developers. So if you see the course is a little bit faster, I'm getting into deeper concepts of Dataverse, and this is not what you are used to based on my previous courses. Sorry, Dataverse is a different ballgame. The course is designed to serve Power Apps developers, but we all know there is no Power Apps without Power Automate. So naturally, although the target is Power Apps developers as the end product, Power Automate is included in almost every single section in this course to the end. Section one starts with the course roadmap, where we are going, what we are going to learn in this course, and also the licensing requirements. Dataverse is not free. Then we continue with understanding the environment, database, solution, and table. So basically we want to get the big picture that what we are dealing with. In section three, we get into Dataverse tables, columns, and data type. So we want to understand different types of tables, different types of columns and the data types that are available inside Dataverse. Again, we are trying to get a big picture. Section four and five, they are mainly about the data types. And these data types start from easy ones, or I call them less challenging ones, like text, number, date, time zone. These things are easy, but each one of them has a few tweaks that every developer needs to know before we end up in a disaster when we implement a large project. Then we are dealing with the Dataverse challenging data types. These things are working with date, but this time with different time zones, both in Power Apps and Power Automate, working with the yes, no field, working with the choice field, lookup fields, and trust me, this is the painful section but you will feel the joy in your own projects. Then we get into Dataverse views and relationships. 
Things are easy and straightforward here. This is not a long section. And finally, after we put Dataverse, Power Apps, Power Automate, all the connections, we need to be able to set the permissions together. We need to secure it. We need to define and add the security roles to our solution. So basically, we will learn the security of the entire solution, not just the Dataverse tables. And we will package it and deploy it before we finish this course. There is a lot of content in this course. You don't necessarily need to start and go to the end. Every single one of these sections is somehow designed independently. So for example, in your project, if you are dealing with Dataverse data and time field, and you are struggling with things, for example, inside Power Automate and how to deal with it, either you want to filter or update this field, you can come straight to these two lectures, just watch them, get your answers, get back to work. Regardless, I suggest every single one of you go through this course from beginning to end. Even if you don't want to do the labs and the exercises, go through it and understand every single one of them. And behind most of these lectures, I have gone through quite a bit of pain in my real projects to come to a solution and find the answers. Now let's have a tasting of the course content. Let's see how we can insert and or update a lookup field using Power Automate this time. Insert and update are exactly the same. The only question is that what value are we going to provide to that lookup field as the value that we want to insert or update, which is basically here. First of all, the name that you see in front of it looks a little bit weird, but we will get back to it in a second. But the focus is just here. The rest is easy. Now let's do it. As you remember, we have two tables. One of them is T-Choice versus Lookup, which has one Lookup field called Department Demo, and Department Demo gets its values from T-Departments, which has quite a few department names here. And inside the Power Automate, I created a flow called Insert Update Lookup, which has just a manual trigger. And as you can see, I'm supposed to enter the department name, and it's supposed to insert the values inside this T choice versus lookup with the department that I provide. So let's see. As you may expect, first of all, we need something from T departments. So regardless of what field we are looking for, it should return one value from here. And most probably you think that we need to provide this field called T department or the GUID, but the reality is that it's not as intuitive as you may expect. So. Let's do it. Naturally, we need to look up the department from our T departments. That part is easy. So I just added a list rows action inside Power Automate. I picked up the table T departments and I just put a filter with the department name. Remember, we use the logical name here. Department name, edit column. Remember, we had the logical name. We always search for the logical name, and that's where the name is coming from. So ATP name equals whatever that the user enters. So this one should return the record that we want to use for the new record that we want to insert. So this one should give us the department or actually the reference to the department record that we want to use for the lookup. Great. This one works. I don't want to waste your time with this one. Next, we want to create a new record. So I look up Microsoft Dataverse and I use add a new row. I need to look up my table. So T underscore choice versus lookup. Name value that I want to add, I would say name from flow. Let's use it as the first record that I want to enter. And then if I expand it, now you have the department demo here. The question is that what value should come here? First of all, remember that list rows may return more than one record. But considering that we already know that the values of the department are unique, there's only one possibility that this action either returns nothing or one. So let's assume the happy path because exception handling is not our topic at the moment. Let's assume this one returns only one record. But the question is that from everything that this guy returns, what are we going to put here? And that part, if I scroll down, not very intuitive, but it is your OData ID. The OData ID of the only record that this one returns, 
But if I click on this one, because naturally list rows returns more than one record, Power Automate expects more than one record. So that's why it puts it inside and apply to each. So let's see if this guy works. So let me just save it and test it. Manually test and the department name, finance department, run flow, done. And it is happy. So let's go back and see if the record has been inserted. Refresh. So we have the record here, but this one is not honestly the cleanest thing that you can have. So if you want to make it a little bit cleaner, you can do it here. Let me just expand this. Remember the field name called OData ID. So let me just get rid of it. Now I can pull it out of this apply to each and put it here. And we are back to square one before we even pick this lookup value. So let me just delete it. I can go to one step before that. Let me just add a compose. Click, the compose is added. And now I want to get this OData ID inside this compose. And this is how I capture it. I bring this guy here and I say, whatever this guy returns, give me the first row of this. So I use first, open the bracket, and I go back to the dynamic content and I pick up the value of the list rows, which is an array that returns only one item. So click and I just pick OK. Let me just test it. And this test is important because it gives me some invaluable information about the way that the output looks like. So I can say HR, for example, and I click on run flow, done. It inserts another record, but it doesn't matter. I expand the sky. And now you will see the output of the first record. So as you can see, because now it is inside first, the square bracket is missing and it only has one record. But here you will see this at sign OData ID, which is technically the same field. As you can see, the value that it provides is a kind of weird thing, but don't worry about it. So this is the field that I need. I just copy this and I go back to edit. I click on the first. And now if I go to the end, I can simply put my square brackets inside it, single code, and I stick this value here. Something like this. Now, if I click on update, this time Compose contains only the value that I need. Beautiful. Now I can come back here. This time I want to insert the second record, so I call it two. And for the department demo, I can come back to the Compose value that I have here, probably you want to rename this guy. So I click on output, save, test, and finally I can test it. This time I enter marketing and I click on run flow, done. And the record has been inserted happily ever after. So if you are younger than me, and can remember the things better, just remember this at sign OData ID is what you need from the lookup field to feed it to the table that you want to insert the value. Same thing applies to update and I leave that piece to you. Now let's do a quick quiz about your lookup field. And then we have the last complex data type, which is file. So I go fishing and leave you alone over the weekend with this course, and I hope you will enjoy it.